Guys, my iPhone just smashed. <laughs> oh man, if anything, smash the like button because of it. Oh. I might be getting a camera going forward. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the fourth update in the build series for the Tamiya Grand Hauler. Um, annoyingly, I've just done all this recording already and my camera turned off, so I didn't know. Um, so I've just scuffed over all of the surface, uh, just with some water and some wet sandpaper. Just scuffed it up so the primer will take a bit better. And I've just gone and washed it off and dried it all off. What I'll be doing now is putting on a dark colour on the underside of the body and all the parts. So just if you're looking through the windows or if you do manage somehow to see under the wheel wells, it will be dark and it won't be, uh, be white. So let's jump on over, let's get some paint on the underbody and then we'll go from there. Okay guys, so I've just painted the underneath of the fenders, the back panel, and the whole interior of the whole cabin in Krylon paint. Absolutely love this stuff. Um, I wish you could get all the colors in it. Um, I just love how well it bonds to the plastic. Um, of course, it's very messy. If you want, you can um, mask off all this, um, but because considering I'm gonna be going over it in white primer anyway, um, I wasn't really too bothered. All right then guys, so I've now covered all of the parts in masking. It's not the neatest job in the world, but it will certainly do. So I flip it over now. You'll see that when I'll be putting some paint on, it won't go through the windows, sunroof or anything like that. And with the fenders, it won't go underneath it and ruin what I've done. Okay guys, so we are now at a point where we can start getting some paint down. Now the difficult part of this, like I've mentioned before, is with the masking. So for example, starting with the front, in order to get the blue flames, what I'm gonna have to do is spray the front of the truck blue, put my masking, my decals on top, and then go over with white, which will of course then leave me with the blue underneath when we come to peel the masking off at the end, but the white will then give me a new base to put the lighter colors on afterwards, and so on and so forth. So at the front we need spray blue, mask cover with white down the sides spray red mask cover with white leaves us with the red flames and then for the fenders at the back we need to spray um blue mask white which will then get us ready for the red again which is where this gets a little bit complicated um but i think i've got it sorted in my head now uh, this is the truck i've been using for reference um the only thing i'm not going to be able to pull out is the probably the white pinstripe around the flames um, it's just a bit too fine for that. Of course, this is a real size truck here. Right guys, first coat of paint, uh, blue for the fenders. Okay, same principles with the front, with the hood on this. We want blue flames, so the first coat we've got to put down is gonna be the blue. You see, I've covered the back in a bag and just some masking tape, just to limit the overspray and to limit how much of the primer I'm gonna to have to re-put down. Um, so same again, let's get some blue down. All right guys, so the blue is pretty much dried now. I have flipped over the masking to the front just to try and protect what I've already done. Um, I'm now gonna take the red. I'm gonna cover everything um, we have here in white other than the top part, because there's just no point um, in that red. And then that will have hopefully formed all the bases for all of the flames. Next step would then be to add all the masking on top of that and then go over with the primer. So by doing so, we will have produced all of the base coat um, and actually effectively the finish for the flames blue flames on the front red flames on the side of the cab on the side of the back and red flames on the fender no blue flames on the fender sorry what we're 
working now. We've just got some greaseproof paper, um, just the same job as tracing paper. Popping it on top of the iPad and then we're just tracing out the patterns. So these are a couple that we've already done. Of course, we can, you can get an indication of how this is going to work. We're then going to be transferring this, uh, well, we're going to be cutting these out and putting this on some vinyl adhesive paper, which will then be sticking to the truck. Okay, all the stenciling is now drawn and done. I've just briefly cut them out, as you can see, and I've stuck them down on some adhesive vinyl paper. And now what we're going to do is I'm just going to go and cut them all out, uh, and then all of the stencils will be done. Uh, one thing just to bear in mind, though, when you're doing your stencils is make sure you know uh, which side the sticky is on your adhesive um, because you do have to sometimes invert your stencils um, otherwise if you don't do that you'll have wasted all your time because you'll have to do more again. Right warping on guys the masking has now been done it's taken me about a week and a half just to get this done um, just because it's so damn fiddly obviously everyone has been traced out and drawn from the iPad as you've seen Difficulty is getting the right ones mirrored for the other side. But what was actually really hard was making sure that, for example, they are as thick as those. Um, it's certainly not perfect on all accounts, but um, I'm pretty damn happy with how it's gone so far. So next stage now, I'm going to cover the whole lot in white. So of course, this will leave me with blue flames, blue flames, blue, red, and red, and red. I'm going to cover it all in white, and then that will give me a fresh um, base to actually put my final colours on properly. Alright guys, so now it's time to actually put the outer coatings of colour on. In order to do that, of course, with it being blue at the back and red on the front, I need to decide which side to do first. So I'm going to do the blue on the back first, because um, I think the blending is going to give me the most problems on the front. So in order to do that, I need to kind of mask off the whole of the front, just so I get my white primer left on the front and it doesn't get covered in overspray. So I've just put that mask in round now, and I'm going to chuck a bag over the whole front just to keep the rest of it clean. Okay, the bag idea went out the window. It was just a bit too fiddly. Um, so I've just used some paper and some masking to mask off the front. What's making it quite difficult to mask this is I have to make sure that wherever I put the masking tape, I don't put it down on the other masking because when I've come to pull this off to put the colour on the front side, I cannot at all risk pulling off the masking because um, I'll ruin all the work I've already done. So that's, that's the biggest challenge so far. Uh, but it looks alright, so I'm going to go and get some blue paint all over the back now. I uh, hope I've got enough left, because um, I did use quite a lot trying to get the proper nice undercoat. But let's see how we get on, so I'm going to go and throw some blue on the back now, and then we'll come back. i got to say guys, just quickly before I put the paint on, I'm just going over with some P500 grit paper. Just get rid of any overspray, any bumps from the previous coat. Um, that's really important to get a nice finish. I'm going to leave it there for now. I think the most important thing with the top coat is to really, really just take my time. Because if it runs at this point, I can fix it. But if it runs over the masking, it's going to be a nightmare to try and take off without ruining the masking. So slow and steady. Okay, guys, so I've just finished the can. I do need to get another one, which is a little bit annoying. So it probably needs another coat. Um, is what it is, though. Everything's going absolutely fine. Apart from that little overspray there and there's a slight drip. To be fair, you can't see it too much, but that will irritate me. So I'll sand that down slightly. Okay, same principle with the rear fenders, wheel guards, wheel wells, whatever you want to call them. Um, I have taken the uh, 400 grit sandpaper over them, taken off any bumps uh, from the white primer from before. And they're going to put a nice coat of red over them. Again, really taking my time.
Yeah. All right, remove some of the masking from the front, as you can see. Um, the lines have stayed nice and sharp, which is great to see. Annoying that we've got this uh, overspray here. Um, I'll have to try and sand that down a little bit. Um, we've got the straight lines across the front as well. Um, of course, there's still more masking there, as you can see, which will come off, which will have red underneath, and then we're going to paint all over this. And I believe there's also some kind of windshield, piece of chrome or something that goes across there. Had to touch up that little bit. It seems like I'd missed some from before. And then I will be putting some masking across the front of this again, because that needs to stay blue, which will flow into the blue flames. Okay guys, so it's at this point, I need to apologise, um, I've got no idea what happened to it, but I've lost the footage um, of me uh, painting the front of this truck, so uh, I do have a few images left, so what I did for the front is exactly the same what I did for the back, but just reversed it, so first thing to do was to mask off the back or the cabin of the truck, this just left all the front exposed. Um, I then took the orange paint being as though that's the lighter colour, so that's obviously the better colour to go down on top of the white primer. And I covered all of the front end in the orange paint. And I was over the moon with how it came out. I got really nice, um, deep, vibrant orange, um, which was as close as to the original colour I think as I'm going to get. So once the orange paint had dried, it was time of course to create the blend uh, and to paint the rest of the cabin red. So I took the red can and I angled that towards the window area where all the frames and the posts are, the A-frames and stuff around the cabin and really focused the paint on those areas to get a really nice, deep, rich colour. And then I just kind of edged back. So I didn't really move the can down the front of the hood. It's a very small area. It wouldn't have took much at all to effectively paint over all of the orange. So I slowly just moved back away from the cab with the red can and just let um, the distance I was creating increase the surface area of where the paint was going. And I just kept moving the can from left to right around the cabin uh, and around the hood as evenly as I could, which ended up with getting a really nice, um, even blend into the orange. And uh, to be honest, I couldn't, have, I couldn't have hoped for it to have turned out any better. So as we've had one coat of lacquer for now, Here we have it then guys, Optimus Prime. Paint job now all finished, all assembled on the uh, chassis. Absolutely over the moon with how well it's turned out. Um, by far the hardest paint job I've ever done. And to be honest, probably ever will do on an RC. Uh, would I want to do it again? <laughs> Honestly, probably not. Um, but was it worth it? Absolutely. I absolutely love it, it's brilliant. It's time for me now to actually start to uh, enjoy the truck. Um, I've got the trailer built up as well, as you already know. Apologies it took so long to get it to this stage. Uh, life kind of just took over. Uh, and then COVID happened, which didn't really help either. But then here we have it, guys. Tell me a grand hauler, Optimus Prime.